of the support for a group of horse built was very successful. Ow! It's going bloody war. I never have. Gordon. Whew. A wait. <laughs> I knew from uh, the minute I could think, or oh, you know that I was going to be an artist. Yeah, I never, I never had to think about it. That was always what I was going to be. It comes from inside. It comes from the very nature and your very being and the very reason why you're put in this earth. You're either an artist or you're not an artist. And now it's a career choice for people. Oh, God almighty, the luxury of a career choice. I love this. I love the, I love the rain. Rain is my favourite favourite thing in the world. There's a beautiful yellow, another lemon yellow. I'm working in oil paint. I'm painting so much at the moment that and having so many shows one after the other, but I haven't time to think, so I only have time to paint. I don't, I mean, some artists have got a set way of putting out their palettes, and I could never remember what's. I just put them out willy nilly. I don't think I've painted myself in that. Uh, but I did like this Hawaiian, it's got kind of, uh, whatever that flower is, hibiscus, no, no idea, don't know if it flowers at all, but anyway, that's just sort of going to paint. That's good. So I only need a shirt because I'm not going to look at myself, to paint myself, because <laughs> I know what I look like, and it'll be a version of myself. I'm not the type of person to wear a Hawaiian shirt. So this is my Hawaii period. <laughs> Very short. <laughs> so it's that way that and a board. Right, this is a hopeless bloody saw. I had me much interest in landscape, there's nothing interesting in the landscape. I like I was brought up in the city, you know, uh, a housing scheme, so it was always about people. I was born in Paisley in 1940, and my parents said it was the only place I could get a house. They hated Paisley all their days. And then we got a house in Fergusley Park. It was uh, once described as the worst slum in Europe, but I loved it. Yeah, this is full of life and colour. All of us were very well educated, self educated, and uh, and really, really curious and interested in life. You used to get 27 newspapers and periodicals a week in our house. I can't even remember the first thing I drew. My mother used to tell people that I was drawing in my pram. My parents were most encouraging and they knew nothing about art, or drawing or otherwise. But my mother used to take me and buy me the best old paints. 
Well, I knew I wanted to go to the art school, and uh, I actually hated it. I felt like a, a total outsider. I mean, I had my, on my drain pipe trousers and my pointy shoes and stuff like that. And they were old school blazers. So I felt like I was an outsider to an extent where I lived, and I was an outsider when I went up to Glasgow to the art school. I've always done self-portraits, ever since I can remember, I don't remember, and I can't understand any artist who doesn't do self-portraits. I mean, that's just second nature to me. I'll put my face in a wee minute. It's probably just my... <laughs> up to there. <laughs> uh, we'll see what happens, because it'll change uh, dramatically during the whole process. I don't use, I occasionally use a mirror. I know I've got a big pointed nose and, a, and black eyebrows and the small ears. So, but every day is, is just a case of getting on with it. I mean, I most start something in a band that I just keep going and just, even if it's rubbish to start off, as it usually is, unless I've got a fixed idea of what I want to do. I'm very industrious. I work like 14, 14, 15 hours. I do about, maybe about, oh, I don't know how many paints are here, 50, 60, or something like that. The one in the portrait gallery uh, of me with a red palette, self-portrait red palette. It started off as a big picture, which I then cut down and then cut it just below the knees, and it worked more successful then. It was an homage to Douanier Rousseau. I admire him so much. He's one of the great painters of all time. Well, I actually look uh, pretty confident. So I look out at the world with an unblinking eye and look at myself with a occasionally blinking eye. The more you do, the harder it gets, in one sense. Uh, but the easier it gets in, easier it gets in technique, because you know all the technical how you do stuff. But it's, it's still a struggle, in part. All portraits are difficult. You're not going to get everything, but you, you try and capture something of the inner life behind the outer surface of what you see. I knew Robbie uh, quite well. It's easy in one way that you know the person. It's quite good not to know the person in a way, but you've got to find out something about their, their history, something that's uh, key to their uh, personality or identity. I mean, the likeness is a given, you know, and you have to do something else with it. The intimate paintings are often very, very, very difficult to do of, of people you know very well. I suppose you know so many aspects of them. It's much harder to embody them all in one. Take. One of the told her, she's at the bottom of the frame. She had 20 minutes before she left, and so I messed up her hair and sat her down and drew her, and 20 minutes later she was off. I had to be very speedy and capture her. Yeah. I've just got to be engaged the whole time, and uh, my work engages me. And I like to surprise myself at times. I couldn't bear it doing the same thing every day in the same style. I uh, coined a, a, a phrase, I am the labourer to my unconscious, both in writing plays and in painting. More, it's more evident in writing plays, uh, writing for the theatre. <laughs> It's just all about the theatre, it's a theatrical theme. And why they got me to do it was, they said, because I was the ideal person because I was both 
intimately connected with pain and the fear. So that was how I was in the position to get it, and I, I jumped at it. Uh, I just it was just felt rather than planned out. I didn't do sketches or anything. I just started. The woman is in the sky with all these clouds, and I knew I couldn't put anything at crucial parts of where the curve comes, otherwise it'd distort too much. So uh, that was a good way to do it. And then I, I put in a black guy holding the sun, who's a cutout, and she's holding a cutout of the moon, and the, the mass of comedy and tragedy. I put on the well-known Shakespearean quote, all the world's a stage and we are but players. I thought I was going to be painting it, but they said, no, we'll get somebody to transfer it onto the uh, onto the dome by projection and measured drawings and now it's a stage where I can go in you know where it's all blocked in and it's quite wonderful to see. I've seen you really. <laughs> I know, it's been forever. <laughs> so, almost done, a week to go. Yeah, a week to go? A week to oh go, that's all, that's it. I know, five down, one to go. No, I'm really enjoying Aye. it. I haven't been up today, but I know you're in over the weekend. Aye, with your do you want to go? Aye, can you, obviously, obviously yeah. what you've been up to, so yeah. you haven't spoiled anything. Wonderful. <laughs> I replicate the sensation of joy I had when I got the commission to do it. And uh, been part of uh, the history of this particular theatre. Very, very happy experience, you know. Do you really think I'd just been in here yesterday? Aye, well, what bit were you doing? <laughs> I, was work I was working on the, uh, the girl in with the star cloth. Oh, she's know. got her face. Yeah. She's got her lipstick on now. Yeah, there she is. Oh, she's great. Much, much bigger than I ever thought she would be. This has come along something uh, wonderful. It really is. Chagall took a year to do the French opera. A Paris year? Op Paris opera, aye. We've had five weeks, so... Disgraceful. I think we've done very well. Yeah. Glad we got you. A year. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> There's my child there doing wonderful work. completely my dad's work. You can't mistake that for anybody else's work. When I saw the original, I just thought, how much work is there in that? You know, it's like so detailed. You know, you're kind of having to up your ante to simulate that detail. Which is here, where they fall between the planks. Uh, right under the blue, but you can't tell what colour's going to... The lights are shining up. So I have to try and remember where they are, I'm putting the blue up in this. So I'm working in oils in this, on top of the original acrylic, which dries very, very quickly. Just cracking on. It's got to be exact up here, and then it's even more exact when you're looking at it from the distance. Uh, so the detail is very important, and all this kind of stuff. To me, certainly, and to everybody working on that, that would be good enough for uh, some people. But for me, no. It's got to look great from every aspect 